How to train an XGBoost model in Python. This tutorial will get you started with an example step by step. I'll show you what is XGBoost and how to implement it in Python, including scikit-learn pipeline setup, hyperparameter tuning, model evaluation, and feature importance plot. By the end, you'll be able to build your own XGBoost model for your prediction tasks. Let's dive in. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. Before jumping into the example in Python, let's answer the question, what is XGBoost? XGBoost stands for Extreme Gradient Boosting. It's an optimized implementation of the gradient boosting algorithm. It became well known because of its outstanding accuracy and efficiency compared to other algorithms in machine learning competitions. We can easily apply XGBoost for supervised learning problems to make predictions. In case you're not familiar with gradient boosting, let's also briefly explain it. Gradient boosting is a machine learning algorithm that sequentially ensembles weak predictive models into a single stronger predictive model. We can apply it to both supervised regression and classification problems. If you're more interested in learning about the gradient boosting algorithm, We've covered its fundamentals in a written tutorial. Please check out what is gradient boosting in machine learning, fundamentals explained. I'll put the link in the description. So the most common choice of weak models to ensemble in gradient boosting are decision trees. The tree-based gradient boosting methods are performant and easy to use. Despite the advantages of tree-based gradient boosting methods, the model tends to overfit as well as could demand a lot of computing power. XGBoost, also a tree-based gradient boosting implementation, overcomes some disadvantages with its optimizations. Let's look at some key improvements of XGBoost versus traditional gradient boosting. It is more regularized. XGBoost uses a more regularized model formalization to control overfitting, which gives it better performance. You can consider XGBoost as a more regularized version of gradient tree boosting. For example, the objective function of XGBoost has a regularization term added to the loss function. We'll use some regularization parameters in our XGBoost Python example. Also, more scalable. XGBoost was designed to be scalable. It has implemented practices such as memory optimization, cache optimization, and distributed computing that can handle large datasets. So overall, XGBoost is a faster framework that can build better models. The XGBoost framework has an open source Python package. This package was built with easy integration with the popular machine learning library, scikit-learn. If you're familiar with scikit-learn, you may find it easier to use XGBoost. All right, now we're ready to build an XGBoost model in Python. I'll use JupyterLab to demonstrate this tutorial. In this notebook, I've divided the process into different steps. Step one, explore and prep data. We'll use some bank marketing data as an example. You can download the dataset from this UCI page, link in the description. This dataset records the telemarketing campaigns of a Portuguese bank. Based on the client information and campaign activities, we'll predict if a client will subscribe to a term deposit, either yes or no. So we're dealing with a supervised classification task. This project comes with different data sets. We'll use this one, bankadditionalfull.csv. So let's click the data folder. You can download this bankadditional.zip file. Don't forget to extract it to your desired location since it's zipped. The CSV file is contained in this folder. Back to the notebook. Let's load the data set. As usual, we'll import pandas as pd and use a read CSV function to load the data set as df. In this XGBoost Python tutorial, 
I assume you already know the basics of Python, including pandas. If you need help, please check out our course, Python for Data Analysis, Step-by-Step -step with Projects. This course teaches pandas, which is necessary to transform your dataset before modeling, and much more. Again, link in the description below. All right, back to our code. In reality, after loading the data, we'd explore the dataset before transforming it. But for simplicity, I'll skip the process here and change the dataset with the following code. So this variable, calls to drop, stores the columns to drop, the ones that are less related to the target based on my judgment. Then we'll transform the dataset df by dropping this list of columns, and at the same time, rename the rest of the columns so that they're more understandable. For example, we rename the column job as job type, default as default status, and so on. For the detailed definition of these columns, please read the UCI page of the dataset that was shown earlier. Lastly, we convert the target, the column as result, to numerical values. So when yes, the client accepts a term deposit, the value is one, otherwise zero. Now let's look at our clean data set. We can print out the first five rows. So here is the head of the data set. You can have a quick look. Also, we can print its info summary. As you can see here, we have 14 features and the target result with no missing data. Note that XGBoost can handle missing values internally, even if there are some. And if we look at the value counts of the result column, it shows that most of the customers rejected the offer from the bank, while 4,640 accepted it. All right, I won't spend too much time looking at the data set. Next, let's split the data set into training and test sets as in the usual machine learning process. We first separate the features from the target as X and Y. Then we separate the X's and the Y's for training and test sets using the train test split function from sklearn. We also set the sampling to be stratified based on the target's value and also a random number seed so that we can get a reproducible result. Now we have the training set as X train and Y train, which is 80% of the original set, and the test set as X test and Y test, which is 20% of the original data set. That's all the data prep will do for this tutorial. Next, in step two, we'll set up a pipeline of training using the scikit-learn package. The scikit-learn pipeline can sequentially apply a list of transforms and a final estimator. It conveniently assembles several steps or changes that can be cross-validated together when training. Building a pipeline is much easier and ensures consistency than setting up the process manually. Hence, it's a good practice to follow. If you're not familiar with the pipeline, you can find the link to this page below and read more about it. So back to our example here, let's set up a pipeline called pipe, holding the parameter steps as this variable called estimators. The estimators includes a list of tuples in sequential order. First, an encoder of target encoder. Encoding like this is a standard pre-processing procedure in classification prediction problems. It will transform the categorical features in our dataset into numeric ones. You can read more about target encoders, which I'll put a link below. Then an estimator, CLF, of XGBoost classifier. This is the sklearn wrapper implementation of the XGBoost classification. Again, we have the random state set here to get reproducible results. If you're having a regression problem, please use XGB regressor instead. If we run the code and print out pipe, 
Actually, you can see some warning messages. But they're nothing we need to worry about for now. We'll just ignore them. Below in the output, we can see that we've assigned the pipeline steps as encoder, followed by CLF. In the following steps, we'll train the dataset by calling this pipeline to ensure the dataset is always encoded by target encoder before fitting the XGBoost classifier. All right, moving on, step three. One more very important step before training our XGBoost model in Python. The XGBoost model contains many hyperparameters. We should tune them to get a better estimate of the model. As you might know, there are different ways of hyperparameter tuning, such as grid search and random search. Instead, this tutorial will use a different approach. We'll use a package called scikit-optimize, skopt, for hyperparameter tuning. It's easy to use and integrates easily with scikit-learn. Within the package, we'll use an object called BayesSearchCV, the scikit-learn hyperparameter search wrapper. In short, it utilizes Bayesian optimization where a predictive model is used to model a search space of hyperparameter values to arrive at a good value combination based on Krauss validation performance. So it's an efficient yet effective approach to hyperparameter tuning. To use this base search CV method, we need to define a search space of hyperparameter values. Back to our notebook, in the Python code below, Within the variable search space, we set up the ranges of the selected hyperparameter values that will be searched as a dictionary. The keys of the dictionary are parameter names. In our case, we're using a pipeline. So first, we specify the name of the XGB classifier estimator, CLF, that we've set up earlier. followed by two underscores and the hyperparameter name. This is a structure of how to call nested parameters within a pipeline. Again, the estimator name of CLF, referring to XGB classifier, two underscores, followed by the parameter name. For example, this is calling within the estimator, called CLF, the parameter name max depth. This is a learning rate, and so on. Then, the values of the dictionary are the type and range of the hyperparameter, defined by the space module of scikit-optimize. We have options of integer, real, or categorical. As a result, only these hyperparameter values will be considered for tuning. This list of hyperparameters is not exhaustive. We are tuning the hyperparameter max depth within the XGB classifier, which is a maximum tree depth for base learner as integers of between two and eight, as well as the learning rate, the boosting learning rate, as a number between 0.001 and one with log transform and subsample and so on until the gamma parameter. You can remove or include more hyperparameters by reading their definition within the XGB classifier documentation, which again will be linked in the description, and you can change their search values as well. After that, we set up a variable opt as base search CV and feed it with these. Pipe, the pipeline that we set up earlier, search space, the search space of the hyperparameters we just defined, CV, the number of folds of a cross-validation as three, number of iterations, the number of hyperparameter settings that are sampled as 10, scoring, the metric for evaluation as ROC AUC, and of course, a random state number. In reality, you may consider setting CV and the number of iterations to higher values to get a better result.
we've set them lower so the training process is faster. Note that it's necessary to use a scikit-learn pipeline when using Bayes Search CV. This ensures our encoding of target encoder is being applied to the correct dataset during cross-validation. Finally, we've got everything set up for training. Step four, train the XGBoost model. So opt includes both the pipeline and the hyperparameter tuning settings. We call its fit method on the training set. Again, there are some warnings that we can ignore for now. And after waiting, we'll have our XGB models trained. It's done. We'll just click to minimize this long output. Moving on to step five, evaluate the model and make predictions. Let's look at the chosen pipeline or the best estimator. You can see these are the columns the target encoder has encoded. And here is a best XGBU classifier with these parameter values. Now let's evaluate this estimator. If we go back, you can see that we've set up the scoring with an opt as ROC AUC. So going back down, we can call the best score of opt to see the ROC AUC score for the training set. The closer this score is to one, the better predictions the model can make. That's a fair score. And by calling the score method on the test data set, we have the same metric for the test set. We can see that the scores on the training and test sets are close. To make predictions, we use the predict or the predict probability methods on the test set. These are the same process as other scikit-learn estimators. All right, we're pretty much done. The last step is optional. In step six, we'll measure feature importance. We can look at the feature importance if you want to interpret the model better. The XGBoost package offers a plotting function based on the fitted model. So first, we need to extract the fitted XGBoost model from opt. As you can see, the XGB classifier is printed with this code. Now we can use basic Python indexing techniques to grab it. So first, within this list, we use index one to grab this part of CLF. Then within this tuple, we use index one again to grab the model, this part. And the code is here. The XGB classifier model is stored with an XGBoost model. We can then apply the plot importance function to plot feature importance based on such a model. The default calculates importance as a number of times each feature appears in a tree. We can see the feature importance plot. Please investigate more if you're interested. And that's it. As you can see, building XGB models in Python is easy. In this tutorial, you successfully built an XGBoost model and made predictions in Python. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.